Chemistry lecture number 35, names and formulas for ionic compounds. Monatomic ion, that's a single atom with a plus or minus charge. Examples are Na plus and Cl negative. Uh, positive monatomic ions like Na plus or Ca2 plus are simply called sodium ion or calcium ion. And they can also be called sodium cation or calcium cation. Negative monatomic ions end with ide. For example, the chlorine anion, Cl negative, is called chloride. And the S2 ion, sulfur ion, is called sulfide. Fe2 plus and Fe3 plus could each be called iron cation, <clears throat> but this name doesn't distinguish the two. Uh, to distinguish them, we use Roman numerals. Fe2 plus is called iron 2 ion, and Fe3 plus is simply called iron 3 ion. An older form of naming would use the Latin name of the element and the endings us and ick to distinguish the oxidation states. Uh, the ion with the lower oxidation state would end in us, and the one with the higher oxidation state would end in ick. And thus, we would call Fe2 plus fer us ion and Fe3 plus fer ick ion. Plus 3 is a higher oxidation state than plus 2, so this one gets to end with ick, and this one is the lower one, so it ends in us. Below are further examples of how the older Latin system would be used to distinguish transition metal ions. Tin 2 plus and tin 4 plus. Well, tin 2 plus would be called tin 2 ion by modern standards, and the older name would be called stan us ion. And then tin 4, because it has a plus 4, or you would call it stan ick ion by the old Latin name. This ends in ick because plus 4 is a higher oxidation state than plus 2. And the same thing with the uh, the copper ion here, copper with a plus one charge, so it's copper one ion, and then copper two, uh, that would be called copper two ion. This is a higher oxidation state, so in the old Latin system, this would be called cupric ion, and this with the lower oxidation state would be called cuprus ion. Binary ionic compounds are made of two types of monatomic ions, one metal ion and one nonmetal ion. So, if the compound is made out of one element from here and one element from here, it's going to be a binary ionic compound. <clears throat> In naming a binary ionic compound, the positive ion, the metal, is named first, followed by the negative ion, the nonmetal. So, metal and nonmetal. Sodium chloride, cesium and oxygen, cesium oxide strontium and fluorine, strontium fluoride. All binary compounds end with ide. Binary ionic compounds with transition metals or group four elements often require the use of Roman numerals since these metals have variable oxidation states. <clears throat> if you look at the periodic chart, these are the transition elements and the transition elements tend to have variable oxidation states, like iron right here is either plus two or plus three. Um, a few of them have constant uh, oxidation states, so they're the exceptions. You need to be aware of them. Nickel, silver, and zinc, they have a constant oxidation state, and we'll get to that later. But all the rest of these tend to vary, and a couple of more might have constant ones. Group four elements tend to have variable oxidation states. Carbon can be plus two or plus four, so you need to be aware that these have variable oxidation states. Okay, so repeat. <clears throat> Binary ionic compounds with transition metals or group four elements often require the use of Roman numerals since these metals have variable oxidation states. So let's take a look at some examples. For example, copper uh, oxygen and copper oxygen could go both be called copper oxide. But the oxidation state of the copper in CuO is plus 2, and the oxidation state of the copper in the Cu2O is plus 1. So we need to use Roman numerals 2 and 1 to distinguish CuO and Cu2O. So here we go. <coughs> we have copper in the uh, plus 2 oxidation state, combining with oxygen in the negative 2 oxidation state. These two would combine together. They have equal and opposite charges, so it's just going to be CuO. Since the Cu has a plus 2 charge, it's copper 2 oxide. This copper here, we're going to have to crisscross the numbers. So it's going to be Cu2O, Cu2O. And the oxidation state of this copper is 1, so it's copper 1 oxide. 
And sometimes the older Latin names are used to distinguish binary ionic compounds with transition metals. So, <clears throat> to write the formula for this, this is tin with a plus two charge. So the formula is going to be SNF2, and this tin has a plus two, and so it's referred to as stannous fluoride. And then this one is plus four, a higher oxidation state. So it's going to be SNF4. This is going to be stannic fluoride. So this SN has a higher oxidation state, it ends in ic. This SN has a lower oxidation state, it ends in us. So that's what the old system, with the uh, newer system, uh, you would just call this tin 2 fluoride, or you would, and you would call this one uh, tin 4 fluoride. So that's how you distinguish these uh, two. You include the oxidation state either with the Roman numeral or uh, with the old Latin way using the ic and the us. Let's try another one. How would we, di how would we distinguish these two uh, compounds. They could both be called iron oxide. Well, one way to distinguish it is that this has a plus two charge, so this is going to be called iron two oxide. <clears throat> this one is going to have a plus three charge, and if you crisscross the numbers, you, know, you get Fe2O3, but looking at the oxidation state, this iron is plus three, so it's called iron three oxide. And if we use the old Latin system, this is fair us, because it's plus two. This is fair ic, because it's plus three, the higher oxidation state between the two. So we either use the modern way, which I think is easier, or you could use the uh, older uh, Latin way. What is the name of Cr2O3? All right, so this is a uh, transition element. We have to include a Roman numeral in here. So it's gonna be chromium, something oxide. Well, what's the oxidation state of the chromium? Here's how we figure it out. Oxygen is in group six, so it's going to have a negative two charge. And the total amount of charge has to equal zero. Three times negative two is negative six, so the charge on the chromium has to be plus three. Because two chromiums with a charge of positive three plus three oxygens with a charge of negative two is gonna give me positive six plus negative six equal to zero. So to make the charge all add up to zero, this chromium has to have a plus three charge. So we're gonna call it chromium three oxide. What's the name of CRO? Same procedure. It's gonna be chromium oxide, chromium, I'm sorry, the oxygen is in group six, so it will have a negative two oxidation number. To balance it out and make it all add up to zero, this chromium has to be positive two. So positive two and negative two will add up to zero. This has to be chromium two oxide. And the compounds below have transition elements, uh, yet they have no Roman numerals. Silver's a transition element, nickel's a transition element, zinc's a transition element. How come there's no Roman numeral in the name? Well, silver, nickel, and zinc are transition elements which do not have variable oxidation states. You need to memorize that silver is always going to be Ag+, nickel is always going to be Ni2+, and zinc ion is going to be Zn2+. If the compound has more than two types of atoms, uh, it means that the cation is attached to a polyatomic ion. To name the compound, you give the name of the cation and the name of the polyatomic ion. And you need to have the formulas of the polyatomic ions memorized so that you can recognize them on site. For example, to name KNO3, notice that there are three types of atoms, so it's not a binary compound. So we start with the name of K, which is potassium. So it's going to be potassium something. And if you've done your homework, you should recognize that NO3 is nitrate. So the name of the compound is potassium nitrate. So you need to be able to memorize this. And people don't memorize it, come to me and say, I can't find NO3 on the periodic chart. It's not on the periodic chart. It's a polyatomic ion you need to memorize or look up on a chart. Okay, so here are the names. K is potassium, NO3 is nitrate, potassium nitrate. Na is sodium, P2 
PO4 is phosphate, CA is calcium, SO4 is sulfate. So if you don't have them memorized, you can look them up on the chart to see what these uh, polyatomic uh, names are. And be sure to include Roman numerals if the cation is a transition element or a group 4A element. For example, <clears throat> you wouldn't just call this, well, PB is lead and PO4 is phosphate. You wouldn't just call it lead phosphate. You have to include the oxidation number of lead. Uh, it's lead 2 phosphate. How do I know that? Well, phosphate has a negative 3 charge. And there are two of them. So 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. So we need positive 6 to balance it out. That means the lead has to have a plus 2 charge. So 2 times positive 3 plus 2 times negative 3 is going to equal 0. So the oxidation number of the lead is 2. Iron hydroxide, well iron's a transition element. We need a, poly, we need a uh, Roman numeral in there. What's the Roman numeral? Well, Hydroxide has a negative 1 charge. We need a positive 3 to balance it because 3 times negative 1 is negative 3. So that means the iron has to have a plus 3 charge. 3 times negative 1 is negative 3. Negative 3 and positive 3 is 0. It's balanced. So iron has to have a plus 3 charge. So it's iron 3 hydroxide. Formula of a binary ionic compound can be derived from its name. Uh, you write the element symbols with their oxidation numbers, then crisscross the numbers to get the uh, to get each type of atom, or to get the number of each type of atom. Excuse me. All right, so let's do some examples. Aluminum oxide. Aluminum is Al, group three plus three. Oxide means oxygen, group six, negative two. Crisscross the numbers. You get Al two O three. Calcium, group two element plus two. Bromine, group 7, or bromide is a group 7 element. Negative 1 charge. Crisscross the numbers again. You get CaBr2, and since there's only one calcium, we just write it as CaBr2 instead of Ca1Br2. Same procedure is used if polyatomic ions are used. Calcium nitrate, well, calcium is Ca2 plus nitrate. The formula for nitrate is NO3 with a negative 1 charge. Crisscross the numbers. You get CaNO3, two nitrates attached. Strontium sulfate, strontium is a group two element. Sulfate is SO4 with a negative two charge, equal and opposite charges, so you just stick them together. If a Roman numeral is given in the name, you use it to assign an oxidation number to the cation. How would you write the formula for tin 4 phosphate? Tin is a group 4A element right here, so we don't know the oxidation number. It could be plus 2 or plus 4, but oh, the name tells us that it's plus 4. So tin 4, tin 4, phosphate, you have to memorize that PO4 is a negative 3 charge. Crisscross the numbers, and you get SN3PO4. If the cation is a transition element and no oxidation number is given, it's probably a transition element that doesn't have variable oxidation states. You need to have the oxidation number for this element memorized. So for example, silver is a transition element and the oxidation number for silver is not given when its name is in an ionic compound. You need to have memorized that silver is Ag+. So silver nitrate, all right, so nitrate is NO3, silver is Ag. Well, what's the oxidation number of silver? It's not in any of the regular things. Oh, it's a transition element. Well, you have to have memorized that Ag is just going to be plus one. So equal and opposite charges, they stick together, and there you go. For a PDF transcript of this lecture, go to www.richardlouis.com. This has been chemistry lecture number 35, Names and Formulas for Ionic Compounds.